All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the Hydrogen Deficiency Index, or HDI. I'll start off by saying uh, what it is and what it's good for, and then we'll look at some examples of calculating the Hydrogen Deficiency Index for a number of different compounds. So the molecular form itself can often give us a lot of useful information about the molecular structure. And in particular, uh, saturated hydrocarbons, right, that don't have any rings, no double bonds, have the maximum number of hydrogens possible, follow this general formula, uh, where... The, if we know the number of carbon atoms, then the number of hydrogen atoms is going to be two times the number of carbon atoms plus two, right? And if we look at, right, an unsaturated, or I'm sorry, if we look at a saturated alkane, right, I've got CH3s on the end, right? I've got two CH3s, that's where the plus two comes from, and otherwise I've got, uh, you know, CH2s and everything else. So um, when we talk about degrees of un unsaturation, we're talking about uh, either pi bonds or a ring. So if I have a double bond, that would be one degree of unsaturation. A ring would be one degree of unsaturation. Or a triple bond would be two degrees of unsaturation. Every time I have either a pi bond or a ring, the number of hydrogen atoms is reduced by two. Right. So when I have the saturated uh, five carbon alkane, right, I've got um, n is 5, so 2n plus 2 is 12, right? When I have one pi bond, right, that drops me down from 10 to 12. When I have two pi bonds, right, that drops me down to 10 and then 8. All right, uh, now if we consider uh, C4H6 and we look at all of these different isomers, um, if we did the 2n plus 2, right, 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2, would be 10, so since we're four less than that, right, four missing hydrogens equals two degrees of unsaturation, or the hydrogen deficiency index would be two. So the different isomers that we could draw for C4H6, I could either have two double bonds or one triple bond. I could have two rings or one ring and one double bond, right? But in general, two missing hydrogens is equal to one degree of unsaturation. That's the same thing as one unit on the hydrogen deficiency index. And the useful thing is that tells me um, that for every two missing hydrogens, there's at least one double bond or ring in that compound. Now, if we just have carbons and hydrogens, it's pretty easy. Um, and so let's look at how some other atoms uh, influence uh, the hydrogen deficiency index. If I have halogens, we just count those as if they were hydrogens. So a chlorine uh, gets included when we're adding up the numbers of hydrogens. In the case of oxygen, it doesn't affect the HDI at all. So just count the carbons and hydrogens, ignore the oxygen. In the case of nitrogen, um, because nitrogen forms an NH2, if I have a nitrogen, that actually increases the number of hydrogen atoms I need by one. So when I do the 2N plus 2, for every nitrogen, I add another uh, one um, for the maximum number of hydrogens that I would need. Uh, now, the book also gives uh, this formula, but uh, I'm not going to give you that formula, so if you want to memorize it, that's fine, uh, but otherwise, uh, I would, uh, I don't think it's that useful. All right, and so the reason we're interested in these HDIs is because uh, if we know the HDI, so if I know the HDI is zero, then I know that molecule cannot have any rings, double bonds, or triple bonds. Um, if I have an HDI index greater than zero, then I know how many rings, double bonds, or triple bonds it has to have. Okay, so uh, we've got C6H10, we want to know what its HDI is, and then how many, I actually shouldn't say double bonds here, What I really should say pi bonds. Um, now, uh, so when I do my 2n plus 2, so in this case n is 6, so 2 times 6 plus 2 is going to be 14. So to be saturated, I'd have to have 14 hydrogens because I only have 10. I've got four less, right? So for, for every two hydrogens I'm missing, that increases the HDI by one. So if I'm missing four hydrogens, that means my HDI is two. And so that means that I have two pi bonds. or rings in that compound. All right, uh, now we want to calculate the HDI for uh, this compound, right? So again, 
right, I'm using the number of hydrogens is 2n plus 2, but then for every nitrogen, I need to add another one to that, right? So for C5H9N, 2n plus 2, 2 times 5 plus 2 is 12, but then because of the presence of the nitrogen, I need to add 1, so I need would need 13 hydrogens in order for this compound to be saturated, and then because I have 9, right, 13 minus 9 is 4, so again, I'm missing 4 hydrogens, so my HDI is 2, and I would have 2 pi bonds or rings. Okay, we've got C4H6Br2, right, again, N is 4, so 2 times 4 plus 2 is 10. Uh, and remember, the halogens count just like hydrogens, right? So effectively, I have 6 plus 2, I have 8 hydrogens, right? So I'm 2 less than the number I need to be saturated. So in this case, my HDI is 1, and I would have 1 ring or pi bond. All right, I have C5H7NO. So my N is 5, so 2 times 5 plus 2 is 12. Uh, so that's how many hydrogens I would need, except for the presence of this nitrogen, right? Because I've got a nitrogen, I need an extra hydrogen to be saturated. So I would need 13 hydrogens in order to be saturated, right? 13 minus the 7 I actually have is 6 missing hydrogens. So in this case my HDI is three. And so I have three pi bonds or rings. All right, uh, last example. So now I've got a big old compound, but it works just the same as the other one. So now my N is 75. So two times 75 plus two is 150 plus two. I need 152 hydrogens in order to be saturated. I can ignore the oxygens. And the fluorines count, because it's a halogen, it counts just like a hydrogen. So effectively, I have 152 hydrogens. So I'd need 152 to be saturated. That's how many I have. So my HDI in this case is zero.